Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Tower. Um, actually, I really like this cube because it changes uh, it changes shape be, uh, during your solve. And um, before you start solving uh, or um, scrambling it up, um, I have to tell you some things about this cube. The color scheme is a little bit different, so uh, it's not like a, a normal 3x3 three three or 2x2 two two cube. Opposite to white in this case is blue, opposite to red, well that's still the same, is orange, but opposite to green is yellow. So it's a little bit different and when you solve the cube you could actually say it's a, it's a pocket cube or a 2x2 two two cube, two of them stacked. So uh, this is how you can approach uh, uh, your solve and before we start solving the cube we have to scramble it up. The first step in, um, well, is, is bring it back into its original shape and uh, you're doing that in two steps. So the first step is creating actually one uh, two by two cube square on the bottom of the, of the cube. And um, that's quite simple. You can use uh, one algorithm for that. It's the same algorithm as you probably already know solving the two by two cube. So what you do is, well, you get three here. You need to bring one in here and you can use the algorithm you know, R inverted, D inverted, R, D. And in this case, we just have had to perform it once, but um, uh, it can happen that you have to perform it multiple times until it's in the right uh, slot. So. Uh, now we can start solving the top layer of the cube. Actually there are five different OLL cases that can appear um, if you're trying to bring the Rubik's Tower back in its original shape. Um, this is uh, the first one and what you see here is that you get two of them uh, opposite of each other and you've got one here and one here and you can position it like this so uh, one of these looking towards yourself and this one is at the left bottom this one is at the right top and you can perform the following algorithm that's F inverted R U sorry U R inverted, U inverted, R inverted, F, and now with an R you can bring them together. And as you can see it's in its original shape. We move on to the second situation. The second situation is that You've got two of these connected to each other and there's one uh, actually laying down here. What you do is you position it like this. So um, the top ones are on the right and you perform the following algorithm. R, U, R inverted, U inverted, R inverted. F, R, F inverted. And it's back in its shape. In the third situation you got something like a chair or an R or whatever. Um, you can hold it like this so now the top ones are on the left and you perform the following algorithm. F, U, R, U inverted, R inverted, and you can connect them with an F inverted. And it's in its shape again. For the last actually two situations, they really look alike. So um, there's always one on top, but it can be over here 
and then there's one at the front. But when you position it here, you see there's not one at the back. So the other situation, so there's one when there this one is here and it has to be on front and the other one is this one's here and then it has to be over there. So this is how you uh, can remember when it's on the uh, left top, you have to have one over here and otherwise it's the other situation. So you position your uh, puzzle like this and you perform the following algorithm. R inverted, U inverted, R, U inverted, R inverse, U2, and you see it coming already, so, oh, sorry, 1, 2, and you can combine them with an R. So I'm going to show you the last situation, and then we're going to start solving all the different layers. So the last case is where you have one on top over here, and there's one that's... Uh, over here in the back like this. So when you position this one over here, there's not one here. So you know this is the case. And you can perform the following algorithm to solve this situation. R, U, R inverted, U, R, U2, one, two, and you can combine them with an R inverted. So these were the five situations, five OLL situations that can occur on your Rubik's Tower. Um, now we're going to continue solving the rest of the puzzle. So now we're going to start pairing the uh, blocks of your cube and actually we're going to pair it and then bring it to the other side until we've got almost everything paired as, except for two. So, um, well, you can start looking for pairs. There's a pair when the color on the top and the color on the front are the right color. So this is a pair. And, um, well, it's already here, so you can flip your cube. Now it's over there, but you can also say, okay, I'm turning it away, bring it over there and trying to find a new pair. Oh, actually there are, this one is also, it's already paired. So, and then we're gonna try to find another pair. So now we've paired these and we can bring it to the other side, not messing it up. So trying to do it like this and you can continue until you got four, um, uh, four squares left that are not, that are not paired. There are actually three situations that can occur. In uh, this case where all the pairs on the bottom are solved, on the top there are um, two not solved. Those are these two and you can see these are paired and these are paired as well. Um, in this case you hold the unsolved pairs on the left side and you perform the following algorithm. U2, 1, 2. L2, one, two, double D, L2, and you flip the cube once, like this, you perform a double D, two, one, two, it's really snapping, then an R2, one, two, double D, R2, one, two, and the U to finish it up. It would be nice if they were solved. Yes. As you can see, all of your pairs are solved now. Um, sorry for the noise of this cube. It's a little bit old and it's not really running very smooth, but I will continue with the next case. The other case that can occur is that the uh, unsolved pairs are crosswise. So in this case over here and over here. And what you do then is that you uh, make sure that the solved pairs are on the right front and um, left in the back. 
So you hold your cube like this and perform the following algorithm. U inverted L2 1 2 double D L2 1 2 You flip your cube again like this D2 double D2 actually <coughs> R2 double D R2 and then U1 2 and now you um, actually solved all the pairs and you can start continuing solving this cube like it's a 2x2. Two two. So we're going to try to solve it like it's a 2x2. Two two. So it's combining the two of them and then bringing it to the top layer. So what you see right here is, well, now you can flip it like that and bring it in. And as you can see, you've now solved not only the white, but also the total two layers over there. And you can continue to start solving your last layer because white's over here, blue's always automatically solved. And there are a few cases where one case is that the two on front need to switch. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the last case in solving your Rubik's Tower, um, it's solving it like a pocket cube. So this situation should be familiar to you, but well, actually when you look at it like this, like two by two, combine the two at the back and um, leave the two that needs to be switched in front. And uh, what you can do, you can perform the following algorithm. So that's, L inverse U, R inverse D2, 1, 2, R, U inverse, R inverse D2 again, 1, 2, R2, and as you can see, you can now combine them with a B and the total Rubik's Tower is up, is solved. Um, I hope this uh, tutorial helped you. Um, if you want to know anything more, I, I know I didn't show all the uh, OLL and PLL cases that can occur during your solve with the tower. They're on the 2x2 two two, uh, Rubik's Cube page. Uh, that is on my uh, website, that's qpuzzle.com, if you need any more information. I hope this helped and see you again next time in my tutorial.